And finally, it's the pride of India's space program so far and the country's most ambitious moon mission. Chandrayaan-3 is on the final leg of its journey to the moon. In just a few days from now, India will be well, either the first or the second country to have landed on the moon's south pole. In one of the most crucial maneuvers yet, Chandrayaan's lander module comprising the Vikram lander and the Pragyan rover has split from the propulsion module to continue its solar journey to the moon's south pole. It's expected to touch down for a historic moon landing on August the 23rd. Meanwhile, Russia's Luna 25 will also be attempting a soft landing on the Luna South Pole in the coming days. And that's why I was saying India will be either the first or the second to actually achieve this. While the two missions are not going to be really interfering with each other as they have different landing areas and they have different plans, it is going to be an interesting coincidence and a possible overlap of their missions. I have more on this. We are now being joined by Ajay Lele, who is a senior fellow at the Manohar Parikal Institute of Defence Studies and Analysis, uh, MPIDSA. Ajay, thank you so much for being with us. So, tell us what we can expect in the next few days when it comes to Chandrayaan 3. Uh, I think uh, so far the mission has been going in a very copybook fashion. Uh, it started on 14th of July. Uh, more than 30 days have passed. Uh, it's going to take another four to five days expected to land on the moon surface on 23rd of August. Uh, if you see the entire journey of the moon, I mean, it is very fascinating. Uh, ISRO is able to achieve exactly what they wanted to achieve. Now, the yesterday only, the basically uh, the separation of a lander system uh, and the propulsion unit has already taken place. So now the lander system with a rover inside its belly uh, is on the way to the moon. Yeah, now but what we have to do? Yes. Sorry, I was just about to interrupt you to say, you know, of course, all of us are very concerned about what happened in 2019. So I guess the moment of real stress is going to be when the Vikram lander starts to move. Because till this point, everything was perfect in 2019. There were those particular glitches in Chandrayaan two, which according to the failure report may well have been a software glitch. So is that when you'll be the most tense also, when Vikram is heading down? Uh, you see, definitely. At end of the day, uh, anybody can be say that we are 100% sure. But at end of the day, it's rocket science and things may go wrong at any point in time. Uh, but so far, so good. It has done exactly the way it should have done. Uh, let's wait and watch because now the mission will be mostly in autonomous mode. Uh, so there will be hardly any sort of a, a readjustment or give message giving from the surface of the earth. Yeah. Uh, already ISRO has taken tremendous amount of precautions this time. If you see, they have undertook the mission in the 2019. Uh, let's not carry, uh, count the COVID time, but still it has taken around three to four years. That means they have really worked hard on the mission. They had identified what were the problems during the 2019 mission, particularly from a point of view of doing a soft landing. And now they have ensured that the uh, legs of the lander are stronger. The weight of a, long, a lander is also a bit more. Uh, particularly, they were a certain amount of a software problems which were uh, during nine, 2019. And because of that, the software was unable to take a decision at the last moment. This time, they have strengthened the algorithm. I think this is what is the key as far as ISRO is concerned. They have done a lot amount of a simulation exercise of checking on the possibilities of what may go wrong. And that's the way the algorithm has been built up. Uh, so even if there could be certain amount of a last time, last minute glitches, uh, I'm sure the software should be able to uh, look at uh, alternative solutions in a fraction of a second and take the cor corrective action. Right. La last question. This entire uh, thing which is capturing global headlines, the race between Russia and India to the south pole of the moon. Is this an unexpected development that we have been a sort of in a space race with Russia? Uh, and it doesn't look likely that the Russians could be winning that particular race. Somehow, I don't agree with this concept of a space race with Russia. Because if you recollect, uh, India was supposed to launch the second mission to the moon in the year 2015. And that was supposed to be a joint mission between India and Russia. Russian space programs were facing certain amount of problems. That's why they were unable to provide us a lander and a rover system. Otherwise, Chandrayaan-2 itself would have taken off along with the Russian rover and lander system. It was a joint mission. 
So I think this is more of a coincidence that now Russian mission and Indian mission both are going to land on the uh, southern pole. Uh, and over the period of time, particularly after the year 2008-2009, when India's Chandrayaan was able to establish the possibility of a water on the moon, everybody is trying to understand more about where the water will be available. And South Pole obviously becomes a very good area where there is a possibility of a water. So Russia putting a mission on the South Pole, I think is from a scientific perspective and India is also from a scientific perspective. Just because there is a coincidence that we are just landing two to three days here and there, uh, one should not get into the zone of calling it as a space race. All right, Ajay, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be watching the that particular landing with a great deal of interest and we'll have more of it, of course, for you on the India uh, story next week. Ajay, thank you so much for being with us.